Welcome to this week's Ask GMBN. Another chance for us to answer your questions. Hopefully, uh, if you've sent them, we'll do our best to answer them. Yeah, and if we don't answer it here, we can answer it in the comments down below. True. Question for you, Neil. Yes. It's coming from Vitor. Lewis says, why does nobody use Essos and Tor forks or shocks in the upper segment? I'm guessing they're higher up market of bikes. We mean, well, yeah, when they're specking bikes. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of people do stick with Fox and Rock shots, probably because uh, that, it's sort of, if all the bike companies do it, then they feel like it's Nesso because yeah. they compare to each other. Yeah. However, you do see SR Suntour forks on race teams bikes. You see them on yeah. Polygon race Polygon team. Polygon race team, downhill team. Tracy Hanna's won yeah, race yeah. on those. Uh, absolute abs on the cross country team. Jordan Saru has had podiums on the Axon Works uh, 34. Yeah. And they're high spec fork. I've even got the, the web page up here. Really adjustable. We've got um, a tie axle system, oh, wow. a coil negative spring, adjustable Ooh. air and volume. So, Definitely a high-end fork, yeah. and that comes in about six hundred pounds, just over. But they do have a lot of low-end stuff as well, uh, so they are cheap. Uh, you know, do have cheap options there, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they even make some uh, forks for other manufacturers. So you might be running them and not realise you are. You wouldn't know you got the internals of an S or some Tourney fork. But yeah, I do think sometimes the brands when they spec in their bikes feel like it's a bit of competition, and they yeah. stick to the more well-known Fox and Rock shocks, even mm -hmm. though SR are a big manufacturer. Of course, check out JMBN Tech for more techy things, things like from Eurobike, where they're showing off these new products. Yep. Next question, uh, Matthew Leduc. Uh, mm -hmm. What steps would you suggest I take to prepare my enduro mountain bike for winter storage? Ooh. I live in BC and come November, I switch to skiing, but want to make sure my bike will be in good working order come spring. Should I be draining or changing oils? Do you know what? The first thing I was like, why are you going to store your bike? But then BC dropped in and that's pretty snowy and well, you wouldn't thing, want to go out and ride in that. We don't ever have to do this. Living in the UK, it's sort of, you ride all year round. Yeah. So I've never done this. Never. But but there's a few things I would consider to do. Like if you're running tubeless tires, um, your sealant inside can go off, can go all like just gooey and into a thick mess. Yeah. Probably get rid of that. Maybe insert some mini tubes into those tires yeah. for storage. I would just, another simple thing is make sure your bike is yes. first clean. And then I would grease everything. Also like your fork seals, make sure mm. there's a bit of lube around there yeah, so yeah. you don't dry out. And I would keep the bike level, don't hang it up, I would then just, Keep it so all everything the, drains down. Yeah, all the, yeah, you get air in your brakes potentially, or your forks liquids are all gonna be sat on, you know, there. Just anyone there. anyone who lives in really cold areas that's done this port, definitely leave a comment because we're not hundred percent sure on this one. We don't do it, but I'd love to know what you do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, Thomas Climo, I've got a 2014 Merida 1 2500 nice. and it's got a lot of play in the rear suspension linkage Ooh. and in the front and rear suspension when I push down on it and it comes back up and hits something and feels and sounds weird. Mm, that sounds like you've been shredding your bike too hard and for a very long time. <laughs> Maybe take it to your local bike shop. Maybe yep. get them to look it over, see if you need new bearings, bushes. Forks, you know, service, rear suspension service. First thing, uh, sometimes it's something simple thing that can happen is your rear axle will get loose. I, I do that all the time. Yes, my bike if, won't come loose. Yeah, just rear tighten it up. An easy way of checking this, other than taking the bike shop, is just uh, taking your rear shock out and just having a feel for it. Take, yeah. put it in a bike stand. Can you feel any horribleness in those bearings mm -hmm. or any wobble in there? Any then it's just be time to swap bearings out. It does need doing. Mm -hmm. Depends how often you ride it, of course, but yeah. Probably. Here's a, here's a video all about rear shocks. Check it out. So let's have a look at our shock here. Now, shocks are really important that we vis visually inspect them. I'm not saying you have to get a magnifying glass out, but if you're seeing any scores or anything like that, you know, it's not playing bluff. It is because <laughs> it is scored. Um, we're just going to give all these seals a quick wipe down, make sure they're all in good nick. And I've got a big light by the camera, so you can actually just work around. And as you point it to the light and you see the light sign shining down the shaft, you can also potentially see any scratches or scars or anything that's either running parallel to or perpendicular to the shaft. So this is really important, okay? Because we want that to be nice and smooth. Next question from Yo Neil Gaming. Yo uh, Neil. Yo Neil Gaming. Yo Gaming. Uh, if the paint on my alloy bike get alloy bike gets scratched and metal is showing, will it corrode, stroke, rust? Should I seal it with some kind of coating? Um, aluminium, it doesn't it's rust, it corrodes. Rust. It goes all white and flaky and a bit yeah. horrible. It oxidizes, that's what it does. Uh, uh, you, you could cover you it. cover it easily. I know, I've seen people do it with nail, what's it called, nail varnish? Nail varnish, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. 
coat it in a bit of that. I doubt. Put a sticker on top of it. Hide it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think anything's gonna happen. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It won't do anything. Not in the long run. It's not like a car that's gonna rust to pieces like a rust bucket. Uh, Stanislaw Nanowski. Does more travel make you faster? In rough stuff, yes. Uh, in cross country stuff, no, no, not necessarily. So that's a tough question. It is a tough question. Well, I would you haven't done a video. I would say that. no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. But it might do. <laughs> well, downhill, cross country, yeah, no, 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 no yeah, but no, yeah, no, but no, no, no. yeah. No. Uh, Nimborghini. I'm trying to get into trials for a few weeks. I've been trying to get into trials for a few weeks now. I've noticed I have a problem with all tricks, which require some sort of pedal kick. Oh, <laughs> yep. Is it because I'm riding left foot forward, even though I'm right-handed and footed? That's me, I do that. Right-handed, right-footed, if I'm playing football, but I ride left foot forward. Are you goofy? Uh, no, natural. Okay. Which way would you spin first? Uh, right. No, you're okay. Um, got lost here. Keep, should I keep practicing until I have good control of my left foot or start practicing with my right foot forward? And what about my mountain bike riding? I would say just ride. The, the one thing, you, you know like snowboarding, yeah. if you've never done it before, you stand in the shop and they push in the back. And <laughs> whatever foot you put forward, that's probably the foot you should ride forward. No, but what if you're a goofy rider, like myself? I am super, well, I don't know if it's ambidextrous or whatever, but when it comes to riding my bike, I'm right foot forward. When I do tricks, I spin into my front foot. Yeah, whereas you're, you're supposed weird. To, yeah, you're supposed to go left foot forward and spin to the right, but I used to go right foot forward and spin into my front foot. Yes. And when I skate, when I surf, it's all weird. You're right foot forward when you surf? No, I'm left foot. What? I'm right, I'm right foot forward yeah. when I surf, but I can surf. But that's another thing. But I'm skating, I'm left foot forward. It's all weird, it all depends. Maybe just, I got used to riding the way I rode. Martin knows more about trials than we do. He does, check this out. Um, Neil, if you would, just show me how you would attack this rock when it was out on the trail. Just, just demonstrate. I shall. Watch this. Yeah. It was very good, Neil. I mean, did it? It's very, very good. Now, if you wouldn't mind, just go one meter from the rock and then try and ride over it. Imagine you've come round a tight corner and you're faced with this rock. Um, one meter, please. That's one, a meter, isn't it? No, no, one meter. One meter. Go <laughs> closer, stop. Now go. <laughs> <laughs> scary when it's you scary. have to rely on skill. The problem is, is Neil likes to use speed to solve problems out on the trail. So what we're going to do is shorten his distance to an obstacle as simple as this rock Work on a technique that means you can approach something and as soon as you sight it, just choose a very simple pedaling technique that will take you over it, hold your front wheel in the air and you can stay nice and safe out on the trail. Harry, ever since yesterday, uh, I haven't crashed my bike or anything, just got it muddy and cleaned it, in brackets. Whilst freewheeling, my derailleur dera jerks back and forward and when I take my feet off the pedals, <laughs> when at speed, my cranks still rotate forwards as if I'm pedaling. That's the free hub then, surely. That's your free hub on your, on your hub, for sure. So it needs cleaning out, bit of servicing, it's just your rear hub. Yep. Gotta be. It has to be. Uh, Harry Norton, can I put, can you put stickers on a carbon frame or would it damage it? <laughs> no, it wouldn't damage it. Oh, would it? No, it'd be fine. It's fine. Tell you what I have done once though, is I had some really thick protection sticker things. Yeah. Put one on the top tube of my Santa Cruz carbon V10. Oof, went to pull it nice. off and it pulled the paint off and I went, <clears throat> That <laughs> <laughs> it may be, yeah, some, some stickers, adhesives on there could potentially pull the lacquer if yeah. the paint job on your bike is cheap or super lightweight Why wasn't to keep cheap? the weight down. <laughs> really expensive and then like high end paint. Yeah. It could pull off the lacquer. But a little sticker, probably not. No. Super like a little GMBN sticker wouldn't no, do anything. No, it'd be really sweet. It'd make your bike worth more money as well, probably. <laughs> Uh, It'll probably get super nice. It is going to get super nice. <laughs> uh, Lorenzo Miguel de los Santos. Is it really necessary to wear Lycra if you're a cross-country rider? I find it really uncomfortable and I really like baggy shorts when riding a mountain bike. Love the show. Keep up good work. Dude, freaking baggies for life, brah. Um, it's not necessary, of no. course. Um, you see people you see people like Marco Fontana mm -hmm. race cross-country in just very slightly baggy shorts. Slightly. 
Wear whatever you want. Wear whatever you want. If you don't want to wear it. I never ride for... I do. I would ride a road bike in Fort Lycra. That's all where I leave it. Yeah. I leave it there. That's it. That's it. Mountain bike, have I? I have, but I'm... Chamois. Yeah. Like, uh, like under your baggy shorts. Sh under your baggy shorts. For under comfort. my baggies, yeah. That's it. For comfort. Yeah. But wear what you want. Here's a video what actually not to wear whilst riding a bike. <laughs> Said men and dresses can't climb. Oh. Yeah. Oh my god, I feel like this is a skin suit. I'm way fast. That's it for this week's Ask. Keep sending us your questions down below and your correct me if I'm wrong is using the uploader. Yes, we can like scrutinize to see if we can actually help you out on some techniques that you are struggling with. Yeah, if you don't know, that is videos of yourself riding. We'll check them out, help you out. Yeah, don't forget to hit that globe to subscribe because you're missing out. If you want to see Chris Opie wearing Lycra <laughs> at the level 100, over there for that one. Give us a thumbs up, like, and we'll see you next Thursday.